Welcome YouTube University. My name is Jovan and today I'm going to show you how to color your locks. Today we have our model which is one of my good clients for many 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 years. Her name is Mikla and she has became a good sport and allowed me to videotape her today to show y'all how we're going to color her locks. She already has color on her ends so She's had them about, how long has it been? We started in January. Okay, so we started in January 2012, and we're now in October, going into November 2012. So she's pretty tight to where we can go ahead and lock her without her unloosening. Now, we do the interlock method on her, which I'll show you later how we go about completing that. So right now we're going to use, she likes to use the brand Textures and Tone. We're going to use bronze and honey blonde on her today. So we already mixed our color up. So when your color locks, because it takes very quickly around the hairline, we're going to start in the middle. So we're going to section her hair off in the middle first. Now, Nicola has about 200 or a little over 200 locks, if I'm not mistaken. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the color up. Now the reason why we mix two different colors, why we mix bronze by textures and tones and honey blonde is because she doesn't quite necessarily want it as light as honey blonde is going to give. So we use two honey blondes with one booster packet and we use the whole bronze. So hopefully that's going to give her her desired color which is more like a uh, warm brown versus a bright blonde. I'm going to take my tint and brush. And because the locks have density to them, it's a lot of locks, I have to make sure that the hair is really saturated. So I'm going to take my tint and brush. I'm not going to put it at the roots. I'm going to put it on the hair shaft. So I'm not going to put it at the roots nor on the ends quite yet until I get it in her whole head. Let me turn around so you can better see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it away, about a half an inch away from the root. And just brushing it down. And I'm going to do that in her whole head until I'm done. And then I'm going to work it through to her roots and her ends. Now coloring locks, sister locks or traditional locks. Coloring sister locks because they're much smaller, um, depends on the color, depends on the hair growth, depends on the person and the personality. Some people don't mind a two-tone look to where a lot of my other clients do mind it and they want to stay on top of it. So it's a personal preference as far as how often you should color your locks. So what I'm going to do is continue this process until I'm done. And I'm going to section it right below to where you can see it's dry, but it's still moist right there. So I'm going to now wet the back side of the locks. And I'm going to turn back around for the ease for myself so that I can reach the color better and work through her hair faster. Now some of my clients do use the natural coloring. Um, the natural coloring can be costly, but everybody just is not into the natural 100%. So just because they're natural as far as their hair texture, they're not getting chemically processed as far as straightening it out, um, they're still okay with using a product that's not 100% natural or organic to complete their style. So in this case we're using textures and tones. So remember save the hairline for last because it takes very quickly. So now we're done her back. We want to move towards the front. Now total, bit as though her hair is very tight and dense, we use three boxes of color. So now that we have it all on her hair, 
the hair shaft. Now we're going to take it to the end and her roots. So now what I'm going to do is kind of squeeze at them so they can absorb some of the color to really penetrate because I don't want no blotchiness within her locks. A lot of people think that it's not safe to color locks. It is as long as you make sure you moisturize them, you condition them. I would say definitely condition about once a month. Moisturize as needed, some needed several times a week, some can use it once a week. Everybody's hair is different. You have to analyze your own hair and work from there. You want to really work it in, work it through. So as I come up on the crown, I'm going to just make sure that she's totally wet. All of her locks are wet. There's no dry areas. We're going to put a cap on her and let her process. So from here, we're going to put a cap on her and let her process for about 20-25 minutes under the dryer to help lift her color up, then as though her hair and her locks are tightly dense. We're going to show you her finished look with, after we've shampooed, conditioned, and dried her color. This is Mikla's new look. So she wanted more of a warm brown, so she has the highlights on the ends, which is going to give her a wonderful look once she's completely retightened and moisturized. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the do-it-yourselfers, those who are tight on a budget, those who do not have the finances to get their hair done. I'm going to show you how to retighten your own hair with the interlock using a safety pin. Everybody should have a safety pin. Uh, the smaller ones that's like brass, they're better, but of course I could not find one for the recording. So we're going to use the one that I could find, um, which is the silver one, but it's better to work with the smaller one, especially if you have smaller locks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to section my hair out. And if you're a do-it-yourselfer, it's best to section your hair in four parts so you want quarters. Section your hair off and work on one quarter at a time so that you don't over skip any locks that you may oversee. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure her partners are clean. Just rub your fingers down the middle. You're going to pierce the lock through with the safety pin. You want to create the pattern of either an X or a T. So you want to complete the whole rotation with either a pattern of an X or a T. So with hers, I'm going to complete hers with the pattern of a T. So I'm going to use the top because it's smooth and pierce it through her locks and pull it through. Almost like threading. So those of you who have sewn, who know about sewing, that's all you're going to do. It's almost like a sewing method. So you take the safety pin. Push it through the side and pull it through. Go underneath the bottom, push it up, and pull it through. And the reason why you want to work with a smaller safety pin is because as you start getting closer to the base of the scalp, it's easier than trying to use a bigger safety pin. So you kind of wiggle it through and pull the lock through. And there you have it. That lock is retightened for all the do-it-yourselfers or those who miss their retightening appointment or want to touch up their edges or anything like that. So I'm going to show you one more time. We want to pierce the lock. And then you'll start at the top, straight in the middle, and pierce it through and pull it. Just So imagine this being your needle and you're sewing something together. So you take it through the side, pull it through. Take it from the bottom, 
pull it through. And then take it from the opposite side, wiggle it through, and you see how it's becoming tight, which is why the smaller safety pins are better, and pull it through. And there you have a full rotation. It's tight, and it's all the way to the bottom. So you'll complete that all the way through until you finish each and every lock. Now, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you are going to have to use your sense of touch. So this is possible for those do-it-yourselfers. So there you have it. Here go the complete look after retightening her whole head with just a household item of a safety pin. For you do-it-yourselfers, remember you're going to follow either the pattern of an X or you're going to follow the pattern of a T to do your touch-ups or your retightenings so that um, if you want to get away from the twisting method. Now when I started her hair, I did do the twisting method the very first time, but like I said, I don't twist other than when I started. So when she came back from there on after, I just did the safety pin method, which is an interlock method, and we went from there. So we colored her hair today. We did the textures and tones, the bronze, and the honey blonde. We mixed the two. Uh, so she wanted warm brown. That's what she has. So her hair does look a little fuzzy. That's because the cuticles of her hair shaft are open because of the color. They will close over a couple days. That's fine. That's normal. It's moisturized. It's oiled. And remember, 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 always add a hair accessory to your hair. I just finished it off by adding a few twisties up top and I just added three little bows that I got from a nearby drugstore and just clipped them on. So this is our model for today. This is Mikola. Hello. And I am Jovan. Thank you for watching my channel. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. And as always, you have a happy hair day. Thank you. Goodbye.